Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we have taken the first of a couple of looks through my collection of what I would call miscellaneous paperbacks. Some of it's modern, some of it's vintage, uh, but nothing super vintage. Um, and these are books that were, really don't come under much of a classification. But I'm going to go through these. I'm going to sort out what's what, perhaps put my fiction to one side, some of my military history titles to another side, and uh, we'll just sort it out from there. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so as I said, this is a bit of a mixture of titles and a lot of these books were books that I bought brand new. Uh, some of them hark back to the time when I was actually in the book industry, but something like that, there's not really a lot wrong with it, except it's going to need a bit of a dust. So we'll do these in little batches as we go along, sort of as I see fit. But what I'm going to do, I've probably got, let's see, I don't know, about 50 to 60 books here for us to have a look at. And um, these ones here, for example, these Andrea Camilleri, I absolutely love these books, uh, but I've got the full set in hardback and um, I really don't see much of a point uh, keeping them in paperback form. This is quite nice. This was the first 10 in the series. Um, if you've never read them, uh, they did do a TV series tie-in as well with these, um, which was Italian made with uh, subtitles. It was shown on the BBC as well. I really, really like the series and I've read, I try and read, I've got a few authors where I read um because the authors are now no longer with us, uh, Camilleri himself died about two or three years ago, um, I just read one book a year. And there's a, I've got a few authors like that because I don't ever really want to run out of them. And um, I've got a week off in August where I'm actually going away on holiday. And I shall be taking, I always take a Camilleri away with me. Um, they're off, off, they're set in Sicily. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're in a hot environment, they just, they're great fun to read, you know. However, as I said, um, I've got, um, I've got them all in hardback. So I don't really need these, uh, these paperback editions anymore. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, so. I will make a, an executive decision on some of these because some of this, I think, can go into my... I've got some, like, odd penguins here. It could probably go with my like slightly later penguin collection. I've got some nice uh, science fiction books, which, again, could go in with my sort of uh, a glance masterworks, sort of the more modern um, science fiction library I've got on. I've got a bit of true crime. I've got quite a bit of military history, which is a, a subject I actually love to dip in and out of. And I've got um, both hardback and paperback uh, copies in my library. Um, but I think what we do, those are now clean. I said, I'm not going to bother doing the covers unless it's something vintage. So I've got all my gear ready. But I think I'm going to have that pile there is going to be the fiction. And I am just going to sort this out as we sort of go along. So like this one, for example, big book on Gallipoli. It's one I haven't read, but it was in the clearance. Look, 2 at Waterstones. So we'll take off this little clearance sticker. I do love military history. And um, when I was in the book business, um, you would often get bargains come come my way, and um, I would grab them where I could. It's got a, a line across the back there, crossing the nine ninety nine. But what a huge book for two ninety nine, eh? What was this published? Two thousand and three. So yeah, so that will go in my uh, military history bit in paperback. And I'm just going to break down the uh, the genres when I uh, do these. Now, what we're seeing today is half of what I've got in my uh, my miscellaneous paperbacks uh, collection. So uh, we'll just break it down as we go along. And um, I'm going to have a similar t number to this in uh, in next week's video, because I think I'm probably just going to go ahead and do the balance of these. And this is like two really, really packed bookcases uh, covered up. And, and sectioned off, which would be fantastic. This is another one which was a bargain, one on Trafalgar. So it was two ninety nine, but it's had the uh, the barcode rubbed out. Once again, that's a military title. So put that one on there. Now this one here, these actually uh, were published fairly reasonably priced. It's um, you see. 
it's got that 21 on the back. It's a bit dusty, isn't it? It's got that 21 on the back. And this is uh, the publisher, the British publisher, Bloomsbury. And I think they were celebrating their their 21st anniversary. And I think they did 21 books at um, 7 99 This is an absolute classic. I did read it when it came out. And once again, look, I got it for 2 99 So a few bargains right at the start here. Now, when I was a bookseller, I always uh, shelved this with the science fiction and fantasy titles. But it was one of those ones that did sort of cross over into the mainstream a bit. Huge book. I'm just trying to think when Bloomsbury's 21st birthday was. God, this sticker's been a bit stubborn. Usually these old Waterstones ones would just come off really, really easily. Yeah, this one's... This is not, it's actually going to tear, I think. It's not tearing the cover, it's just not coming off very well. What a shame. This is going to be a bit of a job. It's unusual for one of these to uh, cause so much trouble. But you've seen the last few just, you know, come off really, really easily. This is, uh, like you can see, it's just going to tear. It's going to be fine, but it's going to be one of those ones where we might need to get the old um, uh, lighter fluid on it to dissolve it because we can't put traditional polish on. And that's not going to work. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do I'm not gonna spend hours on this because it's just you know it's just gonna need the lighter fluid to go on and lift it off. But let's just see when these were actually published. This one was uh, 2007. Yeah. So this is when uh, Bloomsbury celebrated their twenty-first birthday. It's funny, I seem to remember they must have I always thought they were no, they did start in the I suppose it must have been 2007, that was uh, 1986 then. Yeah, look, you see what I mean? What a shame. Oh, well. Anyway, with this one, let me just give it the brush down. And I'll have to get the polish out, the uh, lighter fluid out. That's the only thing um, that's going to sort that one out. So with this, I'll put some paper underneath the covers like that just in case anything bleeds over i should spend the time to get off what i can of that waterstone sticker with my fingernail then i'll put the uh, lighter fluid on that should lift it off then but a bit of a faff however this is another pile so this is going to be my science fiction and fantasy pile because i'm going to keep that sort of fiction separate cluffy brian clough the uh, famous football manager what a life this guy had absolutely incredible really and uh i'm not massively into football by any means however i certainly admired this guy that's his uh, autobiography now i've not got much in the way of so it's dusty this i've not got much in the way of sporting titles however so I'm not sure what to categorise that one on, so it'll have to be a separate pile. Now these two, uh, later Sherlock Holmes ones, these definitely might as well just go in my uh, Sherlock Holmes or my um, uh, later Penguin collection, really. You know, they're even in the, the mock Penguin style there, so I'll pull these ones out. Um, but this is the uncollected Sherlock Holmes, uh, compiled by Richard Lancelin Green. That's the son of Roger Lancelin Green. Um, I once sold some Sherlock Holmes stuff to Richard Lancelin Green. Um, he famously committed suicide and left, this is Richard, and left um, a suicide note, which was akin to a Sherlock Holmes um, puzzle in itself. So that's quite nice, isn't it? And then this is uh, just a study in Scarlet just on its own so 
so yeah, just sort of like reading copies as it were, but they're absolutely fine. Nice, nice additions those. So I think they will be able to go in my uh, normal uh, penguin collection. You know, I'll pop those in there. Um, Ronnie Corbett of the two Ronnies fame. Uh, this is a really entertaining autobiography. dust inside or dirt yeah great great actor and comedian yeah really entertaining that one was again not really sure where to do that I put it with Cluffy sort of autobiographies this is a music book a room full of mirrors a biography of uh, Jimi Hendrix um, I remember this one being pretty good as well Spectre 2006. Once again, probably okay to go with my biography collection. Let's give him a brush. So these are books that, you know, I've bought specifically to read rather than like as like a collection, as it were. Um, and uh, they're long, long overdue to have a good sort out. This is a, another odd military history one, but quite a, a worn old copy, as you can see. It's an old corgi um, on the Gestapo. And uh, I don't know if I would ever go back and read this one now. I've got a great biography of Hitler um, in hardback, and that is almost as much as you need, really, because the two sort of go together. So I'll keep this one with my military history for now, but whether I'll ever go back and read that. This is obviously never been cleaned before, so it's in a rough old state. But you don't see that many books on the Gestapo. Um, and when you do, they do seem to be sort of uh, sought after. Um, I'm going to put some polish on this as well. This is sort of a, a vintage, as it were. Obviously, I bought it secondhand myself, or it came my way secondhand, and I've decided to keep it. that with my uh, military history. I will um, give you an update on the Susanna Clark once I've actually cleaned it, possibly for next week. <laughs> um, this is a TV tie-in to Bleak House. That was uh, the Charles Dickens. Really, really great adaptation of it. What a cast. Fantastic. Yeah, a really, really great, great one. Yeah, Gillian Anderson, Charles Dance there. Dennis Lawson, that was uh, Ewan McGregor's uncle, I think. Anna Maxwell Martin is her there. Yeah. The thing is, with this, I've got nice hardback editions of Dickens. I don't know if I'd ever... This is obviously a more accessible version of it, but I don't know whether I'd ever get round to actually reading this edition. It almost seems like... It's taking up space, which is not required, but I'll stick it with my fiction for now. But I might end up getting shot of that one simply because it's surplus to requirements. Um, this one is a reprint of um, Lynn Dayton's French Cooking, but I think it was um, published by Pan, I think. Or was it Penguin that did it? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember where this one got published originally. I wonder if it says... Len Dayton's Action Cookbook. That was a penguin, wasn't it? That was the one I was thinking of. But yeah, this is uh, like a reissue. <laughs> Len Dayton um, started work at, at Penguin in the 60s as a designer. And um, he always fancied himself as a bit of a bit of a chef. <laughs> so what is that classed as? Blimmin' miscellaneous, isn't it? Uh, miscellaneous. 
This one's definitely under the autobiography. This is Ned Bolting. He's one of the uh, the commentators on the Tour de France, which I'm a big fan of. I like to watch the tour. I've been over and seen it as well. Um, followed it for a week in France. It's great fun. And uh, although this is a little bit dated now, um, Ned Bolting was one of the great, great commentators. Still around now. Um, does his little inserts for ITV4. Um, so I shall pop this one in my uh, biography pile here. That's cool. Right, this is a true crime one. Not sure if I ever would get round to reading this again. Um, cause an Oh look, it's got a torn cover. Um, this is probably one that was uh, remaindered or sent back to the publishers and I rescued it. Yeah, it has that. It's got a, a page out, which means um, the publishers didn't want the full book back. They just wanted it, um, the title page. So I won't put that in my main collection because it is a bit hammered, but uh, that's the story behind that one. This is uh, to tie into uh, My Family and Other Animals, which was um, not the most recent adaptation of it with uh, Keeley Halls, but this is the one from, uh, is it the 80s, with that haunting music? And I believe Brian Blessed was in it as well. This is 1987. Yeah. Really, really great, uh, great book, this. So once again, I think this is probably better... I could either go with my uh, TV tying collection or with my uh, sort of later penguins. Um, it also needs a polish. Yeah, it's really, really good, this version of it. How Doral grew up and became the famous naturalist that we know. Wrote loads of books in the end, didn't he? Most of which got published by Penguin. There we are. So I think whatever happens, that's going to end up going in one of my collections, probably the TV tie-ins. Um, Bobby Fisher, I remember getting this one as well. Now, this one was written off and it had to be just returned by the title page, I seem to recall. But, yes, yeah, missing the copyright information. But this was actually signed by Bobby Fisher, if you can believe it. Um, and um, it had to be sent back. This was before he died. Um, but yeah, what a, he was a genius, old Bobby Fisher. The greatest American chess player ever. Um, I've got a few books on chess, in fact, and it probably would be better to um, file them all together, I would think. So I shall have another pile over here for chess books. Whether we'll see any more today, I don't know. Well, <laughs> in fact, the very next book, this is the famous chess match, wasn't it? Where he played uh, Spassky. Yeah, chess match of the century. I don't know if it was this of the century, but there it was. That's um, a nice one. As I said, I'll keep the chess books together, I think. Now this one here is actually fiction. It's from Ben Elton. Um, I actually, I've read this one. It's good. It's his first World War novel. It's the last Ben Elton book I read. I read all his early stuff. I really liked it. Um, not read him for a long time. Um, is he even still writing? I don't remember the last time a Ben Elton book. Uh, came out, but um, I'll file it with my pile of fiction stuff, but I may not actually keep that because chances are I won't read it again. Now these are nice, these are Grafton and Granada, and these are Philip Jose Farmer, so you probably know of my love of Jose Farmer, I really do like him, and uh, these were the, uh, the well, three of the, four of the classic Riverworld books, um, To Your Scattered Bodies Go is the first one, I remember reading this Someone gave me a copy when I was a kid, and he said, oh, you should try this guy, he's really good. And uh, he's right. So, yeah, Panther Science Fiction, which morphed into Granada, wasn't it? So these are just, I've got, I think, pretty sure I've got all of these, but these are fairly rough old copies. So let's um, give them the brush first, and then we'll polish them down. And these can go with my... Uh, science fiction books now 
you know, sort of general science fiction paperbacks, as it were. Because these are very dusty on top. Yeah, loads of flare. Oh. side. These are obviously uh, from second-hand sources and I said they're just sort of reading copies they're not the original editions or anything like that. NTP can't do anything like that. I don't know if you know what the river, the river world stories are about, but basically um, the main protagonist dies and then he starts meeting up with uh, famous people from history, basically, in uh, this like afterlife. Very, very interesting concept. But I'll give all these a polish, I think, because uh, they're clearly second-hand ones and I'd like to add these additions to my main science fiction library. But it may be I end up keeping all of these in here until I've... Because uh, I've got... What we're going to see today, I've got, again, you know, in a, on another really, really triple stacked shelf. And I've always thought they needed a really good breakdown. Overdue, you could say. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Disgusting. Clean bit of cloth. But even though these are just reading copies, I still want them to be nice condition when I'm actually reading them, you know? And I'm much fussier than I used to be, I can tell you that. But as I say, it's not because this is like collectible in any way at all. I would just want it looking looking as nice as possible. That says a really great series if you've never tried the Riverworld books. Um, definitely recommended. There's lots of different editions. I've got um, I've got them in American paperback first, uh, which I really like. Um, but there's there's a nice set you can get in book club four. Nice hardback set, which is really nice. I'm assuming they're still in print now. It's got a massive great stain on the back. <laughs> As I said, perfect sort of holiday reading, these books. Um, they really are. Probably influenced The Matrix a little bit. Matrix movies, that is. one this one actually isn't too bad just put a tiny little bit of uh, polish on a bit of a dirty spine and these I guess in the just 80s 80s copies scarce or anything like that. As I said, very, very easy to pick these up and uh, well recommended. Let's clean that spine up a bit as well. So, to your scout bodies go as the first one. 
This is volume two, The Fabulous Riverboat. Dark Design was three. Riverworld and Other Stories was four. It was actually number five. The one I'm missing in this format is Magic Labyrinth. Bruce Pennington, quite a, a noted uh, cover illustrator as well. Anyway, they... So they are pretty rough old copies. I'm going to put them with my uh, science fiction and fantasy. This is a good old series, Pillars of the Earth. Um, quite a quite a tome. If you've never read it, it's a good book. Good old book. I've got these uh, in hardback, so this is definitely a double, which um, I've no real need to keep. So I'll pop it with my uh, fiction books for now. But I'm just going to pop that as like a a spare. I don't really need that anymore. This is great. Uh, this is a biography of a uh, carry-on actress, Sid James. Really great read, this one. Yeah, very, very enjoyable, that one. That one on Sid James. So I should pop that with the biographies pile there. Uh, this is interesting. Dalek, I love you. Sort of one guy's um, sort of grown up with, with a life in Doctor Who. Um, it's all right. A very funny book for anyone who grew up wearing Tom Baker underpants. I know I did. By David. With a quote from David Tennant on there, yeah. Uh, my friend um, Pete has some Doctor Who underpants. So that's actually biography. But that would make more sense to be in with my Doctor Who collection, wouldn't it, that one? So I shall file it with miscellaneous because I know it needs to go with the Doctor Who books. Another military history one now. The Unknown Soldier. It's okay. So if any of if I've got any of these military history books in hardback now, I would get rid of them in paperback, but um, I don't think there's any doubles yet. Now, this one is uh, like a classic book. It's uh, a book on poker. So I got quite into poker for a while. Not, I, I played a little bit of it online just for free. I never gambled with it or anything. But um, this was one of the best books on poker ever written. And um, there's lots of like anecdotes and memoirs from sort of poker players. And that is uh, actually really, really interesting. Um, Anthony Holden, not Texas Holden. But yeah, yeah, quite interesting. This one. When did this actually get published? Two uh, 1990, it first came out. I think the whole thing leads up to him entering the World Poker Championship, something like that. Um, nice Ralph Steadman cover there, um, who I really like. But once again, not the sort of book I'm probably going to keep. Uh, but so we'll put it in the the miscellaneous section for now. Um, this one's nice. This is another one, uh, classic First World War. Uh, Richard Holmes, as I said, when these books came my way at a good price, these military history ones, I would always grab them, and uh, this was no exception. As I said, when I get all these books sorted, I'm going to re recatalogue them all by their genre, as it were, you know, so I can have all the military history together. I think it'll make quite, quite a difference. Now, making a bit of room here again now. We've got this one, which is called Spectrum 6, which is an, um, this is an SF, like a sampler or something, I think. Spectre. Spectrum, Spectrum SF. Published quarterly. I wonder where this came from got Stephen Baxter in who I actually really really like his stuff although I don't like collect him what I've read I've really liked John Christopher seems to be the biggest one 2001 yeah that quite unusual I'm um, definitely worth keeping in my uh, science fiction collection I'm sure Steve the outlaw bookseller um, 
would know quite a bit more about that. He's probably got them all anyway. So that's quite cool. Um, Boris Akunin. So once again, I've got a full set of the Boris Akunins. He's a Russian uh, writer. I've got them all in hardback first and I've got them in proof as well. Um, so this was just the first one in paperback form. Once again, I've, I've read this. There's not really a lot of point me doubling up on this. So when I go through the fiction, if it's something that I've doubled up on, I'm going to get a shot of it. But I'm very, very interested. I remember he came over to the UK once and did a signing. I think I may have won one of the hardbacks signed by him. And I was speaking to the rep who brought him over and he said he was driving him around on a book tour. And, um, you know, he'd meet him from, in fact, the first time he met him and uh, he jumped in the car and he just looked at the rep and said, vodka. <laughs> it was like eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> and he was looking for a drink of vodka. So there you go. And this is a, a classic if ever there was, eh? And this is a bit dusty here. Heliconia. This is all in one volume. And what a beautiful edition this was, wasn't it? 9.99. Look at that. Harper Collins. This is a great one. I used to sell this a lot. We always used to have copies in stock. When does this when does this hark from? This one volume edition, and it's a first printing in one volume, 1996. But the books themselves, Spring, Summer and Winter, 82. 83 and 85 in hardback. Yeah, and published as Voyager, part of the Voyager, HarperCollins Voyager. Rather nice. So 96, so they've aged a little bit. The paper is yellowed on there. But what a lovely addition to read them in, eh? You could lose yourself in that, but that's uh, that's beautiful. I really, really like that. So I'm going to pop that in my science fiction pile. That's cool. Now, these two here, and once again, I told you about my love of cycling. However, in effect, these two are books which were all based on lies, weren't they? He, uh, you know, he's he's going on about you know his life and how he managed to get back into cycling, but they're just basically lies. So I'll put them in the biography, but autobiography. But I'm not going to be keeping them because what's the point, you know? Right, here's a nice pair. Uh, the Forgotten Voices series. So these are by Max Arthur. These were like, um, like extracts um, and like little, tiny little glimpses of uh, life and instances. That's a bit stuck there. That uh, happened during the uh, the war. So just, there's these are the first and second world wars. There's uh, there's more as well. So these are part of my uh, military paperbacks yeah in fact that's the forgotten voices series the bbc broadcast them didn't they on radio a nice little pair that's two cool additions to the uh military ah victoria cross here is this is a great book this so Michael Ashcroft, I don't know if he still is, but he was, Michael Ashcroft was a MP, I believe. But in my eyes, what he was most famous for was he had the biggest collection of original Victoria Cross medals in existence. I mean, he even had more than the uh, the Imperial Library, the Imperial War Museum, rather. And um, the books in his, the medals in his collection... He um, he relayed the person's story. How, you know what made them be given the Victoria Cross uh, for various acts of bravery throughout the years, and um, they are. It, this book is really, really fascinating. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and there you go. I mean, some of them are just you know, depending on who they've come from, the books are actually uh, the medals were. You know, tens and tens of thousands of pounds um, but there they are given out very rarely of course for acts of extreme bravery and this book here um, you know, relays the stories behind his collection it's a really good book it's a really good book right here's a work of fiction absolutely uh, 
Um, great story. This yeah, shortlisted for the Booker in two thousand and five. Julian Barnes. It's just a just a great great book. This one. So this is just part of my fiction, general fiction. One pound fifty inside, which we shall get out because it's uh, no longer required. Yeah. Great book, this one. I should be keeping this one. I don't collect Julian Barnes or anything, but this was one of his uh, career highlights, wasn't it? And uh, I remember selling a lot, of, a lot of copies of this when I was a bookseller. Um, yeah, let me think about this one again. This was a, an early, sort of an early internet novel, really, sort of written in... Um, I think the people were all like, uh, they worked for uh, Microsoft, I think, as I recall, unless I mix that with a book called Microsurfs. I can't quite remember now. It's not the sort of thing I would read in a million years now. I don't even think you'd even call it science fiction, although it did come out under the fire and water label. So I'll stick it with my SF, but I don't think it's one I'm probably gonna keep long term. This is a great, great book, uh, World Without Bees. Um, sold a lot of copies of this one once again when the, the bees uh, were uh, struggling. This one's this one was returned because it had uh, it was a faulty copy. That's what that thing says there. Like, faulty, loose page and printing error. So it got put into the uh, the sale. So I would have picked this one up dirt cheap. But the actual subject is brilliant. And I can afford to live without the one the one page again quite a bit of um, dust on these but that's uh, I shall stick that with the miscellaneous <laughs> the Roswell incident now I remember this book came in and we sold a few copies of it when the X-Files got popular and I guess it was because it was on the back of the X-Files, but I mean, it's child brilliant. So I'm, I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm, I disbelieve any of this, but it's not the sort of thing I'm, I'm into at all now, really. So I'll pop that on the miscellaneous. Now, this is an early old book. It's probably the earliest one we're actually going to see today. Um, Benjamin Britten, Peter Grimes, Boozy and Hawks. This is a play. 1945. Yeah, I just kept that because it's a nice old old tome, really, you know. So once again, I'll pop that with the miscellaneous. Now, here's another one in that Bloomsbury 21 series. Look, this is book number seven. They all got remainded, you know. They all got knocked down to 2 .99. I think Waterstones as a chain overordered them, maybe. Now, I'm a bit reluctant to take off the sticker because of the mess that Dr. Uh, that Norris made, but... You know, I, I don't really want to tackle that. <laughs> um, but this is going to go under my sort of... I've got some film books, you know. I don't know. It's a great book. Um, I mean, I, absolutely fantastic. Sort of like the, the wild guys of um, the 60s and 70s Hollywood, really. Um, I don't know what I would put that under, really. Because it's... Uh, I don't know. I'll put it under miscellaneous for now. Beautiful, beautiful edition. So before Glance published their science fiction masterworks, um, Peng, uh, HarperCollins rather, under their Flamingo B format, did these, which were, uh, yeah, like Flamingo classics in effect. Mo a Flamingo modern classic. It was the popular B format at the time. This one came out, I mean, I do like the Martian Chronicles. It's a great book. And this one I used to sell. Um, it's got a, yeah, definitely picked up some dust over the uh, over the time I've had it. And I'm going to give it a polish as well, because this is a beautiful edition of this one. And one I'm definitely, definitely keeping. Just, uh, I think it will benefit from a little bit of a, a little bit of a polish. Just a smidgen. As you can tell by the books that we're doing today, they are really are, well, totally a, a mixture, aren't they? 
not your usual sort of thing that you're going to see from the channel but as i said i wanted to do all the books in my collection and these were just logically the next ones to do and then when i'm going to get when i start on the hardbacks although i have done some of them already piecemeal i literally need to go through and do do them all box after box and that's what i'm going to do uh a to z but that that's lovely that's a beautiful beautiful i wonder if it says you did the jacket on that one oh on the back here cover illustration by george snow well there we are mm. i think that's really really a nice addition that so that's going in with the science fiction collection okay so there's corgi here quite an old edition of the naked lunch and I do have a few sort of older Corgi books in my collection, but this isn't really that old. It's probably, what, late 70s, early 80s? <sighs> Blimey, 68. It was actually earlier than I thought. It's a classic book, and I don't want to get shot of it, but it looks like the top just needs a little bit of glue slid in there. So let's just get a little bit of excess glue off the end of my screwdriver here. Like so. It's just the top edge of the spine here I need to re-glue in, so let's squeeze the first sort of half done. This is one of those ones that's um multi-layered as well. So even though that's the base layer done, there's a tiny bit of a, a second bit needs doing, which is that bit there. And there we are, that's uh, sorted that spine out. Because that is a keeper, that one. I think I'll pop that with my... Um, my vintage uh, corgi books so um i'll pop it with the science fiction because that's all stuff that's going to go with a separate collection now here's uh, an early book on tarantino in actual fact he uh one of my favorite directors i remember buying this one when it came out 1995 yeah he would have only had reservoir dogs and pulp fiction at the time with uh what was number three was it jackie brown was on the way um it's a little bit the worse for wear than that it's aged I mean, it's, it's 30 years old now so it just needs a little bit of a polish i think we'll make wonders on this one i shall uh squirt it straight on doesn't need a lot just needs a bit really There's a few little marks on it which uh Coming up nicely. I actually have a little uh, Tarantino shelf of all my books related to him, so I shall stick this with it. So once again, another little miscellaneous that will need a bit of a, a rejig. Now here's another Andrew Camilleri, which uh, I have already read, of course. Um, so I'll pop that with the fiction, but it doesn't need any else. This is interesting. This is a Beatles one. Once again, some dust on the top here, which will just wipe off. In fact, that's going to benefit from a bit of polish on, actually. So let's do the uh, brush first. I haven't got many books on the Beatles, considering I really uh, like them. But the thing is, this, there's so many, isn't there? And um, I think I've sort of, you know... 
I know enough about. I don't really want to know any more about them. I mean, there's obviously different aspects of their life and stuff, but, you know, there is a limit. So much of the abuse was, was in the public eye, wasn't it, anyway? Because they were big stars from very early on. So if you're a fan, you sort of know the Beatles story back to front, don't you? In a lot of cases. But I seem to remember this is a good one, and it's worth keeping. It looks much better, doesn't it? So, um... I'll pop it with, like, the sort of the miscellaneous or music-y titles. This is a great book. It's um, one on uh, Houdini, Harry Houdini. And uh, this is superb. I remember reading this when it came out. It's a great, great read. What was this? 2007. It's funny, when you worked in the book industry, you would come across non-fiction books that you wouldn't dream of reading unless you'd heard about it or if someone had recommended it. I remember, it's got a, a great quote from David Blaine on the front, but I remember um, a pen from Penn and Teller was raving about it as well. And it's such a great, great book. It really is good, this one. Um, and yeah, recommend it if you uh, if you're at all interested in magic or even you know knowing a bit about Houdini. This is the uh, the, the book to get really. So I shall once again stick that with the biographies. Um, this is a great book. This is sort of my paperback copy of this one. Um, I've um, got the Austerity series by David Kiniston in hardback. Um, this is the paperbacks are really good. They're recommended. Um, the hardbacks are excellent. It sort of looks at British social history. It starts in 1945. The series is planned to go up to 1979 when um, Thatcher becomes to power. Um, yeah, yeah, really good. There's um, some Penguin. Penguin Books did a series called, or a book series called Mass Observation, which is quoted in here. And um, yeah, it's very good. So I would put that under. Not military history, but it is a history book. But as I say, because I've got it in hardback, there's not really a lot of point in me keeping the paperback of that. Right. This is another book which was uh, came under the... Um, uh, when I got interested in, in poker and some of the celebrities behind it. And this is the man with 100,000 breasts. So the story is um, Michael Connick was a gambler and uh, he wouldn't turn down any sort of bet really and um, someone bet him to have a pair of women's breasts implanted for one year and he had to wear them for the entire year as a bet and that's that's exactly what he did and if he did do it wear them for a year he got a hundred thousand dollars so um that's exactly what he did so it's, it's that and many many other gambling stories so it's uh it's actually a really really good uh a good story if you're interested in like gambling or the casino business or poker that sort of thing so under the miscellaneous this is a good book this is ray Kroc. ray Kroc is the guy who um founded well he didn't find mcdonald's he's ray Kroc is the guy who made mcdonald's what it is today he brought it to the big time that's who ray Kroc was and uh there's a great book uh there's, sorry there's a great film with uh, michael keaton playing him which i can recommend i forget what it's called but it's uh very very good it might be called under the arches possibly or that might be another book on mcdonald's which i've got but it's a fascinating story uh, ray Kroc was a real entrepreneur he took a lot of um chances but in the end well we all know how big mcdonald's is today you know but um back in the day he had to he risked everything basically and um he's not certainly in the movie he's not an unlikable guy um so yeah quite interesting so that'll be with the biographies here's another uh, military history title and this one's got a clearance ticket but i'm confident that this one's going to come off unlike the uh, other one so having a, sh a small prey here here we are yeah that's it's just coming off much easier i think possibly those bloomsbury ones have got a matte cover and that's what's stopping them coming off uh, easier than you would like but yeah this is a book on nelson i've not read this one but i like books 
book series that are set during Nelson's time in the Navy. So that the Hornblower books, the Kid books by uh, Julian Stockwin, and obviously the Jack Aubrey books by Patrick O'Brien, of which we got a huge batch to see next week when I do like the second half of these. Um, but that's, let's see, I'm going to go in my big military history part. I need to just rejig the camera slightly. Okay, so this one here is, um, it's a fold-out, it's a tra travel man short stories. It's uh, The Speckled Band, which is a Conan Doyle. And I think it's designed to be sort of read. You'd have like this bit, you'd have it in front of you, you could sort of read it on the tube or on the train. It was like, um, yeah, sort of a fold-out a fold out homes and uh, it was an interesting little idea i forget completely where i got it it's a little bit about um conan doyle on the back yeah there we are quite unusual um it's a little bit of homesiana as it were and uh, i do enjoy sherlock holmes so that's probably better off going with my uh, penguins of the homes edition so i'll pop it on that little part now one of my favorite historians is this guy max hastings now max hastings um i've read for for many years and this is um yeah one of his good ones um he's written on all subjects i first came across him when he did his um his coverage of the falklands war now i see this one's actually got um a, a ripped cover so it was probably destined to be returned as like a damaged copy so i will keep it though because it's only a tiny little rip and as i said these books they're not it's not like this is not a hardback first edition this is in my collection as a book to read and that's exactly uh what i shall do with it um, apart from that it's absolutely perfect so that's in the military history pile here's another one here um, it feels a little bit dusty uh the fall of the roman empire a new history now unfortunately where this one's been stored over the years it's caught the sun you can see it should be nice and bright and red like that, but it doesn't matter because it's for the content. So this one's once again got a rip on, which was probably why I've got it and it probably got remaindered. And I grabbed it in the sale, you know, but I'm gonna keep it with my history books because I say it's all about the content. It's not about anything else. So that's that one. Just a handful to go here now. This was the uh, anniversary edition of uh, Catch-22, an absolutely classic book by uh, Joseph Heller. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. And um, the book's not bad. And um, I think it got re-released in this um, library uh, when the sequel came out, which was yeah, something happened, wasn't it? I believe it's called. Um, but this is quite the quite iconic cover. It's got the... Um, you recognize that's like the side of a bomber plane you know um it does i have read this one it does seem to have a little bit of cover where but not much considering it's been read and um i think in actual fact some of this is actually there by design rather than by damage that's happened to it whilst i've actually been sort of reading it <laughs> if you know what i mean but anyway there we go now that's under the fiction pile. Now this next one is quite interesting. So I remember when this book came out, um, I was absolutely fascinated by it. And um, it had, yeah, this second edition published in January, 2008. It's massively out of date now, but it was one of those sorts of books that when you started it, because it was Rough Guide, and these are part of Penguin now, and I absolutely love the Rough Guide travel guides. I find them eminently readable. I really, really do. And um, just the whole structure of the Rough Guides books I love. Now, nowadays, people say, at least I've heard people say, that because you hear climate change every other day in the news, um, that people have sort of switched off about it. And in actual fact, you shouldn't say climate change because people just, well, they just ignore it. What you should actually say is pollution. So if you said because of pollution, um, this happened, you know, these, these beaches, um, you know, the, the water level was rising, for example, um, and it's just down to pollution and a change in the environment. Perhaps people would listen to it more if you just said pollution as the buzzword rather than actual climate change, you know, but it's a difficult one. And, um, you know, there doesn't seem to be any real simple solution um, in sight. But until I get an, a more updated one, the second one, it's going to stay in the miscellaneous. Um, this one definitely needs to go into my uh, vintage penguin collection. So this is Thor Heyerdahl, and Thor Heyerdahl 
It's a great, was a great explorer. My favourite book of his was one called Aku Aku, which was the exploration of Easter Island. And um, this was the one I did prior to that, I believe. Now, this is the one he did after Easter Island. This is his third one. Aku Aku is the second. And um, his first one is um, called, what is it called again? Um, oh, it's the Kontiki Expedition is what it's called where he sort of explores or starts to explore the Polynesian islands. But it's yeah, a really, really great addition, this one. Um, so this is the revised one from... This is the first paperback from 1972. So yeah, this very much needs to be in with my uh, vintage paperback collection. So I shall pop that over there with the science fiction. Um, this one's quite nice. This is a look at the early years of uh, Seoul and Motown, um, an area which I do particularly like and enjoy listening to. It's got a sticker on the back there covering it up, which I'm going to have a stab. It's a real vintage sticker, but I think it just covered up the original price, and we might need to put some uh, polish in afterwards. Yeah, it's going to leave a slightly sticky residue, but we, can, we have the power, so... We can just put it straight on. Although it's not obviously dirty, believe me, it is in the flesh, you know. Um, I didn't buy this from brand new. It's, what, it's one that came into my shop years ago and I kept it. Because I do love Tamla Motown. And just Motown in general. There we are, that sticker has actually come off really, really nicely, so that's good news. little bit left there. There we are. Yeah, quite nice that. Okay, and that can go in the miscellaneous. It's all the music -y ones. Right, this next book is absolutely fantastic. So, um, it's basically, yeah, Philip Hoare, it's basically like a history of the whale and how it has been treated historically throughout the years by man, right back to the earliest days. Um, it covers films, it covers in literature, and it covers the actual whale itself, you know, in actual reality. All right? And um, it's also incredibly sad as well um actually one of the award for best non-fiction it's it's so readable this i i liken it very much to the um the harry houdini book the same sort of format and the readability of it that just the right amount of illustrations as well it's great but it's not you're not going to feel great after reading it but it is it's an eye-opener shall we say so um yes i do recommend this one um once again in the miscellaneous pile now we got to to finish off we got a couple of chess books so when um, Faber, the famous publisher, um, used to have a whole line of chess books, I don't think as much of this sort of stuff goes on anymore because I believe these sorts of things have just moved online, you know? Um, and chess is so easy to play online nowadays. Um, but they did this book here called The Complete Chess Addict, which wasn't just like loads of classic matches what it was was um uh a lot of like chess trivia as well and chess history because you forget how chess has been around for such a long long time you know they say it's you know one of the oldest games out there if not the oldest game so this was the original one which i never owned when it came out which was in the uh mid 80s but i did pick this one up which was the follow-up which was the even more complete chess addict and this is my um this is like the second edition and this one came about when um nigel short was uh um going to be uh in contention for the world title doesn't win it of course there he is um a little pac-man bookmark there <laughs> which i shall leave in there for fun um, but this is my original of this one from that was in 1987 something like that did i do the edges on this one as well 
But um, yeah, sadly Nigel Schwartz didn't win. Um, playing Kasparov, wasn't he, at the time? Um, but well done, and he's still on the scene now. He's a pundit, he's a commentator. Obviously, a great grandmaster, the, the best British chess player we've had. Well, for a long, long time. I think he. I don't know if he's actually been surpassed as yet, but I don't think so. So anyway, there we go. So a bit of a mixture. Now I've got literally an identical amount again, which is another shelf of these sorts of books to sort out, which is very much a real mishmash of stuff, fiction and non-fiction, and war, and as you can say, interesting stuff. Hopefully, you might have seen a few books that you think, you know, I wouldn't mind actually reading that. And I hope if you have, you've got a few little recommendations. That would be that would be cool if you did. But there we are. So thanks very much for watching today, if you've made it to the end. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do please give it that thumbs up. Do leave a comment if you've seen something interesting that you just weren't expecting to see today. I think it was, even I was surprised at some of the stuff we've uh, we've come across. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you next Saturday with uh, the second part of these. Bye.